My first memory of music, well, it all kind of mushes together at some point a little bit, but I do remember there was a lot of music played in my household, whether that be from my father's vinyl collection or my mother singing and preparing church choir songs. I also do have a recollection of my father strumming a few chords on a nylon acoustic guitar. And another very early memory, and that was actually the first time I got in touch with electric amplification in a tangible way, was when my cousin brought an electric guitar to the house with an amplifier that had built-in distortion. And I remember that that really spoke to me. The compression and distortion, the overtones of the distortion was something that I was immediately drawn to and that hasn't changed to the day. I don't think there was a singular moment that made me want to start playing music. It was just something that was natural to me. It was something that was around the house, around the family, this, in our culture. And picking up an instrument was just something that would naturally occur. And I could express myself through it. I could make friends with it, through it. And it is something that, yeah, that was just shaping my path through life all the way throughout. My favorite band early on was probably the Rolling Stones. I saw them live twice in very young years. I then later got into Nirvana and heavier bands, then progressed through to Metallica, Pink Floyd, Dream Theater, and then got into the world of jazz and fusion. Yeah, I think that's my progression through the genres of music. Also, I'm a big lover of classical music. Um, yeah, and that's a European thing, I guess. Well, I've been using Laney amplifiers for most of my life now, for more than half of my life. I bought my first Laney amplifier when I was 18 from my first pay from social services. That was fun, picked it up through eBay uh, from somebody and was always drawn to the thick, creamy, compressed distortion that was cutting but warm, um, thick but transparent. To me, it's just one of the best types of distortion I can think of when it comes to my style of guitar playing. When I first saw this pedal, I was, I was really getting excited because it really does look the part. It looks just like my favorite Ironheart series amps. And at the same time, I was a little bit skeptical because I found it hard to believe that something so small can sound so big. So the way I use this pedal varies greatly on the the types of gigs that I play, the types of sessions that come up, etc. So there's many use cases for this, which is probably one of my favorite things about it. We have the DI out, which is fantastic for recording direct, whether that's in a hotel room on the road, whether that's in my studio, or that's on a recording session. And then I would also integrate that within a, like a multi-effects type situation. I can put the pedal itself within the effects loop of a multi-effects unit, but I can also do it the other way around. I can uh, put a multi-effects unit within the effects loop of the loud pedal and therefore get all the effects goodness through my caps. So it kind of depends on the situation. I either have the pedal in the effects loop of a multi-effects unit or vice versa. And if I want to have the ultimate flexibility when it comes to those things, I just go for cable method. But it also sounds really good just going straight the eye out or straight into a loudspeaker with no bells and whistles. It sounds fantastic doing just that. It doesn't always need to be the big setup. The channel I use by far the most, which is possibly 95% of the time, if not more, is channel 2 because channel 2 in itself is extremely versatile. So, for example, I would run a volume pedal in front of the input, or I use the volume control of my guitar to dial that way down, turn off the boost, and I have a really spanky, clean, yet still compressed tone. I crank up the volume on the guitar or on the foot pedal, I have a mid-gain sound, and then I hit the boost, and it's all out shred goodness. So that's all within channel two. And I go to channel one uh, if I want something that is super pristine and uncompressed clean, almost like a, a warmed up DI signal. If you've never experienced a loud pedal, I urge you to check one out, plug it in and have your mind blown.